I don't know if you've had a chance to attend, we had a power and love conference Woo! going on here. It started on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and uh, I had a chance to attend some of the nights, and I was here with my wife last night, and what's amazing is I was just listening to the testimonies that people were giving, because this was not just a conference, it was actually power and love school where yeah. people would listen to the word of God and then step outside, probably out of the comfort zone, <laughs> you know how we are <laughs> love being comfortable, but here they have to step out of the comfort zone and actually go and minister to people that are in this city, in this area. And amazing things happen. I mean I was listening to testimonies where just a regular person like me and you praying for a girl who was blind and eyes opened up. Isn't that awesome? I Talking know. to other people who are addicted to drugs and they say, pray for me. Yeah. I don't want to live this way anymore. Yeah. I want what you have. I want the Jesus in my life. That is happening here, right now. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. I'm sensing it in my spirit. I think what's going on is um, Exodus time is here. You know, uh, remember guys when we went to uh, the Pennsylvania to sight and sound theater on the bus. <laughs> that was, I, I love that time on the bus just talking to other people. And I was talking to Luba's sister. Can I tell you my Luba? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were just sharing, she was just sharing some thought, uh, thoughts and uh, she said something interesting that I'm like, wow, I wanted to learn more about it. She said, you know, when Israelites left Egypt, they walked out of Egypt as just a crowd. People just walking in the, you know, just a crowd. But as the time went on, they began to form this a diamond shape. It was, it was a, a nation. God was forming a nation. A crowd of people. Just regular people. Just, you know, get out, get the belongings, just start riot, and eventually it formed into a nation. And you know who was in the middle? The tribe of Judah. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He's our commander. I don't know about you, but what I'm sensing here that is happening in this area is Exodus. You know, it seemed like there was a, a revival here about 100 years ago where God was moving mightily. Lives were changed. I mean, it was wow. And then somehow it became known as a, a dark place. Spiritually dead. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling that. You know, just talking to other people and and there's a lot of little churches in this area. And, and, and I feel what's happening is, you know, these little churches, they were just kind of like, like a crowd. But I think what God is doing in these last days is He's raising His church. I'm talking about a church with that C, capital C. You know, because I mean, yes, there's many local churches, but there's one church, and that is the Church of Jesus Christ, where He is the Lord, where He is the Commander, and He's our leader, and we follow Him. And I'm looking forward to more of such days where we just join together. And when I was there last night, there were churches. All kinds of churches. I mean, it was fun to see people that I kind of grew up with. I'm like, hey, I, I remember you going to the same church together, and now we're all in different churches. But what's amazing is to be united together, praising God, and then stepping outside and, and seeing the hurting world. People are in trouble, ministering to them, and seeing their life touched by Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, we've been on, we've been talking about dreams. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I well, right after the break we started talking about dreams and I 
my one of the first sermons was you know you know how to build dreams in a dreams and then we talk you know not only how to build dreams but building dreams on the word of God and then the, the third time we talked about dreaming again because people did dream at one time and then something happened and people started dreaming but we talked about hey dream again God wants you to dream so today I'm telling a message a God honoring dream a God honoring dream. You know, we are approaching where, or, or I should say, the summer has already ended, and uh, I don't know if you know this, but the days are getting smaller. You know, you used to get up early, 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 and it was already light. Now, you get up, it's still dark, and it's going to be dark, dark. Um, we're going to be spending more time inside. I don't know how your life is, but my life during the summer, it's always go, 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 go. And, uh, you know, now it's kind of slowing down a little bit. You know, slip in a little bit more, relax, uh, take breaks, uh, you know, kind of take it easy. And, uh, and that's great, and, and I think that's important, you know, to do that, to sometimes take it easy, to relax. But, It is not a time to relax your purpose. You know, this time of taking it easy, maybe, is not the time to, you know, to relax while you are here on this planet Earth. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, I would say, actually, this time is actually a time to refine, you know, the dreams that are in your heart. To look at them again and, 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 and Ask God to renew the passion inside of you. Ask God as you pray to renew those dreams. Then you will become dull to them. I mean, they were given to you by God. And it's very important to write your dreams down. You know, there was a study done that looked at successful people and highly successful people. You know what they noticed? People who were successful, they, for, for one thing, they had goals, they had dreams, they had something they were aiming for, so they were successful. Otherwise, if you don't aim anything, guess what? You're just going to wander through life. But people who had goals, they actually were successful. But then they looked at people who were very highly successful, and they noticed that the only difference is they had their goals, their dreams written down. Mm. What's the big deal? Write it down. Right? What's the big deal? Huge difference. People who were successful and people who were highly successful. The only difference, they had their goals written down. I mean, think about our Heavenly Father, we were just worshiping that. I thank you for his worship team. I mean, such an awesome atmosphere, just bathing and, 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 and just praising God. It was just renewing, refreshing. It was very good. And this God that we were just singing to, he took time to write down his word for us. Have you ever thought about it? Why not? Just parents pass it up to their children, children to their children, and God wrote his word down for us. When God speaks to you, when, when, when you pray, and you're in the presence of God, and, and, and then you begin to see certain things, write them down. Write them down. It's important. If you have your Bibles, you can open to Proverbs chapter 29. See, what I want you is I want you to live a life uh, that is significant. I don't want you to live a life that where you don't make a difference. Proverbs 29 verse 18, reading from the message. If people can't see, can't see what? If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. Another translation says, 
they wander aimlessly. They just walk, sway. But when they attend to what he reveals, what God is showing, what God is saying, if people pay attention to what God is doing, they are most blessed. How many people want to live a blessed life? Man, I want a blessed life. Blessed meaning happy, fortunate to be in me. Yeah, that's the life that I want to live. For me to live that kind of a life, I have to see what God is doing. I have to attend to what is God doing. When you're clear on what God is doing, when you're clear on where God is going, and you need to dream big dreams. That brings purpose. And probably the most fulfilling thing someone can say is, yeah, I am living out my dreams. <clears throat> now I want you to dream again. There was a time in your life where we dreamt, especially as when we were kids, I mean, talk to kids, they, they always talk about their dreams and what they want to do, and this is amazing. But then something happens. Somewhere in the process of growing up, we kind of quit dreaming. And it happens to everyone. So I'm going to show you, uh, in the Word of God, why it's important to live out your dreams. Number one, dreams are the language of God. This is how God talks. God talks to us through dreams. Someone might say, well, I've never heard God out of a voice. Yes, you have. If you had a dream from God, I got out of every dream, that's how God talks. You're thinking, maybe, how come, well, why won't God speak to me in English? Or if you're Russian, why won't God speak to me in Russian? Because God wants to take you out of reality. See, God lives outside of earth's limitations. God is not limited by anything. He lives outside of it. You know, He lives outside of the law of gravity. He lives outside of the law of science. He lives outside of the law of earth. He's not limited to that. So when God wants to speak to you, oftentimes He wants to speak to you outside of those limitations, and the only way He can do that is give you a picture. Let me show you this in Scripture. And I believe in these last days that we're living in, God's going to remember our dreams and His people. And we're going to see that happening more and more in these last days. Because this time, is so much more critical. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. So what's going to happen? When God pours out his spirit on every kind of people, look what's going to happen. This is what it's going to look like. People are going to get dreams, they're going to prophesy, have visions. Dream, prophesy, have visions. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters, your young men will see visions, your old man will dream dreams. Notice how three of these things are pictures in your mind. These are the pictures in your mind of the things that have not happened yet. Prophecy, vision, and dreams. And God wants to navigate His church through the direction that we live in, in this way. That's how He wants to guide His church. Prophecy, dreams, and vision. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit, God says. And your daughters and sons will prophesy. Young men will see yeah. visions. Old men will dream <laughs> What you need to understand is that dreams is the language that God speaks to you through. Here's the second thing that I want you to know about dreams. Dreams 
are a target of your faith. Some people say, well, what is faith? How do I have faith? Faith has to have an object attached to it that hasn't happened yet. So you can't have faith without a target. <laughs> dreams become faith. Uh, dreams become the target of your faith. In other words, there's nothing to pray God for or believe God for if there is nothing that you are hoping that might happen. You have to have a target before your faith can take action. It's got to be something that's not there yet, but you have to see it. And then your faith has a place to go. One of my jobs is, uh, as a pastor, is to lead you to a faith journey. And look at Hebrews 11, 1. Hebrews 11, 1 says that faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Maybe we won't see it happening yet with our physical eyes. But in my spirit I see it. In my spirit I hope for it. And now my faith has a place to go. See, and I want this for you. I want you to be able to see those dreams that God has laid in your spirit. I want your walk with Jesus Christ to be meaningful. You know, we come here, it's not just to come here, have a good time, and then go on our own lives. Our life, every day, every day of our life, is to be meaningful. And our walk cannot be meaningful if our faith doesn't have a target. What is it that you're hoping for? What are you seeing that hasn't happened yet? So what is that target? Hopes and dreams. It's the things that God has shown in your spirit. And you know what? When God shows you things in your spirit, you know what you can say? I'm going to trust God for that. I'm going to pray for that. I'm going to believe God for it. It's important to start dreaming again. And, yes. And now is the perfect time to refine those dreams. Dreams need some kind of a target. And here's the third thing that I want you to know about dreams. <coughs> dreams have a habit of coming true. Yeah! <laughs> they do! They really do. But it takes somebody to believe they're impossible. You know, I'm, I'm thinking uh, back in 1969, around that year. You know, have you ever looked at the sky? Sometimes on a clear, on a clear night, the stars are just amazing. It's just like, wow! Beautiful. And then there's this huge plate, dinner plate in the sky. It's like, what is that? I mean, that's what people thought for a while. It was just a dinner plate in the sky. But then somebody said, hmm, maybe it's not a dinner plate. Maybe it's something else. So they did something, did some glass put together, made a telescope or whatever, and they saw something more. But here's what's amazing. Not only to know that, oh wow, it's a moon, but to create some sort of a big bullet that runs my toilet, right, or whatever that is, <laughs> put a human being in it, and then shoot him into space. Whoa! And then, I mean, and all this is moving. I mean, the earth is moving, right? The moon is moving, there's winds, and, and this vehicle lands, precise 
exactly what it was intended to relate. And then a human being walks out of that vehicle, steps on the moon, gets back, and comes back to Earth. That's pretty impossible. Somebody believes it's possible. And it happened. Somebody believing right now that they got to go to Mars soon. Well, a lot farther than the moon. What I'm trying to get is, hey, dreams come true. Somebody dreamt. Dreams do come true. Understand your faith. Look at Luke chapter 1, verse 37. It says, For nothing, nothing is impossible with God. Stop giving God for something that is impossible. Something that is impossible to do. So, what will stop us from doing the impossible? Let's look at some things that will stop us from doing the impossible. How about a wrong view of life? A lot of people have become distracted in what God wants them to do. You see, as a church, you know, there's all these crazy things that are happening, but as a church, we should not be nervous about what's going on in the world. <laughs> we, as a church, we have to stand firm in the Word of God. The world is not to sway us. We're the light to the world. I, I think God is setting up a stage for the salt and the light. That's who we are. We are the salt and light of the world. I mean, wherever we go, we are to bring flavor to that place. Mm -hmm. We are to bring light to darkness. And though the darker the world is, church, the brighter we shine. Mm -hmm. I've used this example before, you know. On my cell phone, I have this little flashlight. And you know, if I would put it on here, it wouldn't do much. But turn this light off and completely make it look the dark, and that little light illuminates the whole room. Yep. Church, we are children of God. Made righteous. Wherever we go, we bring light. That's what we do. We bring light to darkness. Church is not something we do. Church is something who we are. And church cannot be stopped. So get something. Get your eyes on something that is bigger than the problem that you're going through right now. Here's another thing that the problem will stop us from doing the impossible. And that is a, a wrong view of ourselves. You know, when we have a wrong view of ourselves, that can stop us from doing the impossible that God is calling us to do. And you know, um, some of us have gone through so much in life, and um, we may think, you know, or maybe you're sitting there and thinking, yeah, maybe you are staying preaching, and um, good for you. You don't know what journey I've been through. You don't know what I've been through. Tell us something, church. It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've been through. Who's our God? Who do we serve? You gotta allow him to stoop down and it doesn't matter if you're in a mess, he can pull you out of anything. Is there anything that's impossible to God? No way. 
Nothing is impossible to God. Psalm 35 says that He will take you out of whatever you're in. God sees greatness in you. Greatness that maybe you won't see, but God sees that in you. And He's powerful to do it. He's not a wimpy God. He's not limited by anything. Almighty One is able to pull you out of anything you're in. See, the problem is, we don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. You can't see yourself the way you are. You need to see yourself the way God sees you. And you know how that's going to happen? When you study the scripture. You have to find yourself in the word of God. Others, if you just look at yourself, you will have a wrong picture of yourself. You are not who you are. And sometimes people say, well, I am who I am. Listen, you are not who you are. You are who God sees you are. And here's another thing, last thing that I want to mention that could probably try to stop us from doing the impossible, and that is the wrong view of God. Sometimes we forget that we serve a powerful, a mighty, a nothing impossible God. That's our Lord Jesus Christ that we serve. We serve this kind of God and then we pray these boring prayers and then, oh God, how can I have a, a, a good day? Come on, God. If we are serving the impossible God, we're going to pray for a good day? How about God send a mighty revival to Springfield? Where we are all united, all the churches that are in this area come together, praise and worship you, and then go and minister to people. That there will be no sick among us. Hallelujah. That there will be no one who is addicted to anything among us in this area, God. And then this goes to the ends of the world. Impossible. Listen, if people can land on the moon, God can do the impossible. Yes. We need to really start praying those prayers where we need God's involvement. Look at Jeremiah 32 verse 17. Ah, oh, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Nothing. There's, a, there's nothing that God's like, oh, that, that's too difficult. Nothing. Whatever you think of, nothing is too hard for God to do. So our dreams, we're talking about our dreams. What kind of dreams are we to have? We are to have a God-honoring dream. And uh, what is a God-honoring dream? You know, a God-honoring dream will always seem risky. Why? Because it's a faith step. It's a leap you have to take. And uh, If you're looking for an easy way out, that's not how God rolls. God doesn't work that way. God requires you to have faith. It requires you to take this leap. I, you know, been flying planes for a while. Started back in 1999, and, and then I wanted to do a parachute job. So I don't know, for some people, maybe if they get in this small little plane, they get all nervous, you know. So for me, it was nothing. But I remember when I tried, tried to jump uh, from a, with the parachute for the first time. And so we're going up. We went in, it was fine, I was fine. But then, the door opened. <laughs> Yikes. And not only that, now your feet are dangling. And here I am. I have to make a decision. Oh, you know, there's one thing going up there in the plane, but it's another thing when all of a sudden, you know, when you're looking through, oh, how everything's so small through a glass, but now your feet are dangling, and, and you're on this kind of thing, you gotta let go. Woo! <laughs> I 
Yeah. It was a thrill and I was going, Whoa! <laughs> oh yeah. It was something. And thrills are cool. They're fun. But what about a thrill to lead someone to Christ? And the Holy Spirit is nudging you to go and speak to a certain person. And you're sitting there and you're like, you're here dangling. You know he's nudging you. Go speak to them. Why you make that move? Of faith. Yeah, it's scary because they can say, I want not to be your Jesus. That happened to me. Try to minister to somebody and, and whatever, maybe they had a bad experience before. So now you're like, Holy Spirit is not in you. Are you going to listen to his words? Are you going to make a little faith? But imagine when you listen to the Holy Spirit and that person receives Jesus Christ as their Savior. Just imagine another person for eternity is going to be with Christ in heaven, not suffer in hell. Is that a thrill? Yeah. How about a thrill of praying for somebody or touching them and they're healed? Wouldn't that be a thrill? Whoa, you're healed? I didn't expect it. I just put my hands and you're healed. A thrill of going on a mission trip. Some of us have gone. I'm still trying. I'm trying to go to Burnell, but I hear they eat rat there. <laughs> I don't know. Just imagine you trying to eat the meat and you know, the rat with our teeth and just. that and then try to kiss your wife afterwards and I'm wrong because it'll work. But people have gone on mission trips when they've eaten rats. But hey, the impact that you do in that area for the kingdom of God. And sometimes we might not never know until we are in heaven. God honoring dreams are risky. They seem risky. You gotta step across, you gotta have a thrill of your life. Look at Hebrews. Why? Because Hebrews 11 6 says, and without faith it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he reward those. Look. So when you believe God, when you, when, who does he reward? God rewards those who earnestly seek him. What is it to earnestly seek him? It's when you are hanging and you're gonna, are you gonna jump? Or are you gonna say, ah, no faith? <laughs> jump. You will be rewarded. You will be thrilled of a lifetime. And number two, a God honoring dream will require God's involvement. You know, we should dream dreams where God's gotta get involved. You know, so then when people, people who know us, they're going to say, good thing God showed up, otherwise they wouldn't pull it through. That's the dream you've got to have. I mean, we are serving God who's almighty, who does the impossible. So let's live our lives not according to how big we are, not according to our business, but let's live our lives to how big our God is. Amen? Ephesians 3.20 Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask for or imagine according to this, to his power that is at work within us. Look, whatever you imagine, whatever you think for, God can do even more. That's the God that we serve. And church, you know what I'm praying for? I'm praying that you will be able to sense God's power working through you. 
our walk with Jesus Christ is to be meaningful. It is meaningful when His power is working through us. And here's the last thing. Um, a dream that is honoring to God. A God-honoring dream changes lives. You know, you can have a dream of uh, maybe flying an uh, airplane or maybe how about a fighter jet? I know somebody who's going you know, to be buying one and I can't wait to fly it. Because I've asked to fly in a fighter jet. I said, no, you can't. So I kind of know somebody really well who's going to be buying one. And that will be a thrill to fly in a jet. Um, or maybe they're going to have a journey going into space. Maybe that's going to be your dream. Pay $200,000 to get to go in space. Maybe somebody has a dream of uh, bungee jumping, you know, when they tell you to your leg and just jump off the bridge. But, okay, that's more back to reality. <laughs> how, about, how about a dream of a lake on a house? Or a lake on a mountain? Or a lake on a mountain near a lake? How about that? <laughs> or maybe a certification that you have that's a dream. But, you know, if you're honest with yourself, at the end of the day, you know, that's not what your life is at all about. It's not about those thrills that you can get out of life. Can I tell you what your life is all about? Can I tell you what your life is all about? Your life is about impacting others. Impacting other people's lives. You know, your, 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 your life is not about your job. It's not even about your money. It's about your life intersecting with someone else. And every one of us, listen, every one of us here, regardless of what you have done or where you came from, you have a place in God's design. There is a spot for you. And here's the thing, this spot that God has for you, it was already here before you came, before there was a you. God had already had a spot. And then you know what he did? He created you to fill that spot. And that is why it is so important to live out your dreams. You know, to do something that will have a difference for eternity. To touch someone's life. And I'm going to close with this verse. That is found in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 through 12. It's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. Long before we were heard of Christ and got our hopes up, He had His eyes on us, had designed us for glorious living. And listen to this. You are part of our purpose that He is working out. You are. You are part of our overall purpose He's working out in everything and in everyone. You are part of the plan for this generation, right here, right now. God is working through you. You know, Francis Drake prayed his prayer some time ago, and he said, Disturb us, Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves. When our dreams have come true, because we've dreamt so little. When we arrive safely, because we travel too close to shore. Disturb us, oh God. You know, church, we have to dream again. And dream big. Dream the impossible. We serve God to whom nothing is impossible. Pray and your devotions time as you read the 
word of God. But be sensitive because he will speak to you. He will give you pictures. When you're in his presence, he will show you what he wants you to do. And it might seem impossible. Remember, who's with you. He's with you. To him, nothing's impossible. So dream again. And not just dreams, but dreams that are God honoring. Amen? God honoring dreams. Today is also a special Sunday because we're going to be participating in the community. You know, um, we're talking about dreams and dreaming big, and you know what? If you're sick in your body, if you're sick in your body, you know, you're going to have a headache or something? You don't want to do anything. I mean, I've had headaches here and there where I wasn't even able to work. It was just the drilling through my head. And some people constantly, constant pain. Well, you know what? The good news is, you don't need to be in pain.
bring the containers to us. The altar is open. Come from both sides. Bring your man prepared. We will take bread and cup. We'll return to our seats. And then we'll participate together. The altar is open. Thank you, God. Amen. 